Chapter 3 A Box of Kittens Mandy was so excited about seeing the kittens she could hardly eat her dinner. She sat at the table reading the class project sheet Mrs. Todd, her teacher, had given her during the last lesson. Dr. Adam peered over Mandy's shoulder. What's that you've got there? he asked. Mandy explained. We've got to keep a journal. That'll be interesting, her dad said. Yes, Mandy said. Then we've got to read them out loud to the class. Mrs. Dot's giving us a prize for the best one. I'm sure you'll have a lot to put in yours, Dr. Adam said. There's never a dull moment here. Mandy grinned. That's true. She finished her project sheet. She would have to start her journal later. By the time Mandy had changed into her jeans, it was almost seven o'clock. She hurried to James's house. She ran up the front path and knocked on the door. Blackie barked and doggy footsteps came thudding up the passageway. James's door opened. Blackie pushed past and ran out, his tail wagging furiously as he saw Mandy. He gave a loud bark and started pulling at the laces of her shoes and making growling noises. Mandy chuckled and pushed him gently away. Blackie! She bent down and hugged him tightly. Now, Blackie, she said more sternly, I don't want shredded laces, thank you very much. She took hold of Blackie's collar. Sit, she commanded. Blackie ignored her. He just barked again, then ran off around the side of the house. He stopped by the rose bed and started to dig. James dashed after the puppy and grabbed his collar. He pulled him away from the rose bed and dragged him back indoors. He shut the door quickly before Blackie could run out again. Mandy laughed. You're not having much luck training him, are you? No, I'm not, James said. But I am trying. I think you've got a lot more work to do, Mandy giggled. Yes, James sighed. You're right. Come on, then, Mandy said. Let's go and see those kittens. Mandy and James made their way along Main Street and across the village green. A big man in a cap was coming the other way. It was Walter Pickard. Walter had just retired from being the village butcher. He lived in one of the tiny cottages behind the village restaurant. Walter's face lit up when he saw Mandy and James coming toward him. Hello, you two. His voice was deep and kindly. Where are you off to in such a hurry? Mandy told him. You don't want another cat, I suppose, Walter, she asked hopefully. She knew Walter had three cats already. Maybe one more wouldn't make a difference? Walter shook his head. Sorry, young miss. My three young cats get enough into enough mischief already, thank you. Never mind, Mandy sighed. I just thought I'd ask. Walter waved as they hurried on their way. They went along the narrow footpath beside the church. It was a shortcut to Meadow Lane. Here we are, Mandy said as they reached number 16. She pushed open the gate. James followed her down the path. The house, they look the house looked bare and empty. There weren't any curtains on the windows. Mandy guessed they had been taken down for the move. A couple of wooden packing crates stood outside the front door. There was a pile of newspapers beside them. Just as Mandy was about to knock, Katie came whizzing around the side of the house on her bike. Her face lit up when she saw Mandy and James. Hi, she said. I was just going to see if you're coming. She got off her bike and propped it up against the fence. Come on, they're in the back. Around the back of the house was a wooden sh shed. Katie pushed open the door. Mandy peered in. She gave a shiver. It was damp and dark inside the shed. There were a lot of garden tools stacked up against the one wall and a lawnmower in the corner. There was only one small window to let in the light. Were the mother cat and her kittens in here? Katie bent down and pulled aside a curtain covering the front of an old closet. Mandy drew in her breath. There, in a cardboard box, was a small, rather thin black cat. Nestled against her side were six tiny bundles of fur. Mandy bent down with a little cry. Oh, look, James, aren't they gorgeous? Two of the kittens were black, and two were orange. The other two were orange and black. They all had beautiful big eyes and tiny sc screwed-up faces. James kneeled beside Mandy. They certainly are, he whispered. Does Tabby mind being stroked? Mandy asked, looking up at Katie. She knew you had to be careful not to upset mother cats. 
Katie shook her head. No, she doesn't mind at all. Katie kneeled beside Mandy and James. She picked one of the orange kittens. Here. She gave it to Mandy. Then she picked up one of the black ones and gave it to James. Mandy cradled the tiny creature against her chest. It mewed softly and clung to her. It had tiny, very sharp claws. They're so beautiful, Mandy whispered. The sight of the six squirming furry creatures, with their tiny ears and perfect little kitten faces, made Mandy's heart turn over. Tabby gave a small meow as Mandy gently put the kitten back. She picked up one of the black and orange ones and stroked it softly. She felt the tiny bones of its heads and legs. You sure they're warm enough in here? she asked Katie anxiously. She knew how important it was to keep kittens and their mothers as warm and dry as possible. She wasn't at all sure that the cats were being looked after properly. I kept them indoors in the closet under the stairs when they were first born, Katie explained, but my mom has had to clear it out, so we brought them out here. My mom says they're all right. Mandy bit her lip. A damp old cardboard box was hardly all right. The kittens did look healthy enough, but she would have felt happier if they were indoors in a warm room. How old are they? she asked. Nearly six weeks, Katie said. Will that be old enough for them to go to new homes? Just about, Mandy said. Most kittens are taken away from their mothers at six or seven weeks. Katie sighed and looked sad. I don't know what we're going to do with them. Did you ask your mom and dad? Mandy put the second kitten back and stood up. Yes, they don't know anyone offhand, but I've put up an ad on our board, she added. Maybe someone will see it at the clinic tonight. Oh, I hope so, Katie said. We're moving on Saturday. Saturday? James exclaimed. We'll never find homes by then. Mandy frowned at him. Yes, we will, she said firmly. I know we will. We've got to. Before they went out, Mandy tucked the blanket carefully around the mother cat and her babies. She noticed that the food bowls by the box were both empty. She needs some milk, she said. She picked up a bowl. And she should have fresh water to drink whenever she wants it. Oh, I forgot to get some, Katie said. I had to help my mom with the packing. Well, can you get some now? Mandy said. She was determined not to go home until Tabby had fresh food and water. Mandy wanted to find homes for six healthy kittens, not six hungry ones. Mandy and James waited while Katie went indoors to fill up the dishes. I don't think they're very happy in here, do you? James said, looking worried. No, Mandy said. I don't. She looked angry. People shouldn't have pets if they can't look after them properly. No, they shouldn't, James agreed. The sooner they've got a new home, the better, Mandy added. It's up to us to find it for them. Have you asked your grandma and grandpa if they know anyone? James asked. Mandy shook her head. No, but we'll drop by on the way home. Grandma knows everyone, so maybe she'll have some ideas. <laughs>